It is absolutely not wrong to say that Among Us has grown excessively popular, to the point where its image has been engraved into people's mind, prompting them to see illusions from everyday objects. This trend has become so popular that even shirts and merchandise are being made around them. And what would you know, it even infiltrated mobile games. If you came here expecting a complete analysis and breakdown of the Among Us theory, you're unfortunately in the wrong place. However, I would recommend you stick to this video as the games we're about to check out are pure gold. And quite possibly sussy. I'm gonna be butt ass naked so the wind could just be hitting my balls and shit. Hey bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! The first game is known as True Survival Imposter Shoot. The game, for those who don't know, is quite clearly a ripoff or it may be a reference to the game Choo Choo Charles, combined with Among Us. At first, I was rather skeptical about this game, but after playing it for a while, I realized that the game was truly fun. It kind of reminds me of games like Galaxy Attack, just at different angles and, well, with different concepts. The game controls, however, are terrifyingly simple, as you just have to aim and this guy automatically shoots for you. Basically, you just have to survive waves after waves of monsters until you finish the dungeon you are currently in. With each dungeon, the waves changes, with different stuff like station repairs and boss waves. As you guys have probably already figured out by now, the boss is Charles. However, he isn't the only boss. We also have Brown Charles and others, which I think is from the Garden of Ban Ban, but we're gonna speak about it. Upon defeating a boss, you are rewarded with an egg, with which you can buy weapons. I need an egg. Weapons. Some weapons are way stronger than others, but I guess you can use the weaker ones if you're excessively bored, but that's just not me. You can also get different trains by watching Bruh. an ad. Yeah, obviously, it comes at a cost, wouldn't you know? The game is certainly satisfying to watch with a player having different combinations of perks like dual shot and multiple shot, which I find really neat as it totally depends on the player's style of gaming. However, the game is way too repetitive. True, you have different backgrounds, but when it comes to the playing itself, the monsters are way too common. Except for that, however, the game is pretty fine as is. It's satisfying as hell to kill bosses and watch enemies explode, but like I said, it's only lacking in a variety of enemies. I would say this game is good for whenever you just want to chill and relax. And well, that was unexpectedly a good game. Among Us Among Us uh, um, Among Us Among Us Among Us Among Us The second game is Survival 456 Buried Imposter. About this one, I'll let you guys guess what reference this game is. Yup, it's a squid game reference with crewmates. I'll be honest, this game was genuinely annoying to play. First, you are forced to play the game with Wi-Fi and the game has ads. To top it all off, each time you finish a level, you have to watch an ad. And the mini games aren't even 1 minute long which means that you would watch a whole lot of ads before actually finishing the game. The concept of the game is good, don't get me wrong, but they just didn't put it well into action. Hell, this game is probably just a game about watching ads. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it at all, but hey, let's move on, because it's fucking trash. Come here, bot! Finally, we have the third game, which is one of my personal favorites, Imposter and Doors Survival. As its title suggests, it's reference to Roblox Doors, and we've again an imposter. This one actually impressed me as it has so much good qualities. The game is smooth, its monster design may be stolen, but they delivered it very well. And it's actually pretty difficult to play it if it's actually your first time playing it, as there are many different controls and mechanics one has to learn. You also have access to gadgets like torches and lockpicks to help the player progress further, if they are bad, that is, because I didn't really need them. 
Even I haven't actually finished the game yet, because it's actually difficult to complete this game. The more levels or doors you go through, the harder it gets, and there's even boss levels which I find really sick. However, everything comes with their flaws. The game, whilst it may be good, is very repetitive which can be quite annoying as it easily gets boring, but it can also be a good thing as speedrunners will really enjoy it. Another problem is that the game is not really replayable as if the player already knows every room and monsters, they can easily just avoid them and playing almost becomes an inconvenience. Overall though, I think that the game is great and I like it. And with this, we've come to the end. These games were in fact very sussy, with some of them being a lot worse than others. But then again, they are not meant to be played a lot. It is nice that they implement different characters from different games to give the player more variety, but yeah, I think there could be added more from their parts, I mean, like different monsters, original ones that is, and if I had to choose a game to play a lot, out of these three, I would choose the true survival one, because, well, there's literally so much thing you can do. I mean, it's pretty satisfying to be honest, just killing monsters, but you guys can leave a comment and tell me which one you enjoyed the most, because, yeah, I do want to know, funny enough. For now though, I'm out, goodbye lads.